gamers. We're back with another video, same t-shirt as the English guide because it's the same day. I still don't have internet, it is what it is, so I figured might as well make another guide. Mongol has gone through quite a few changes, uh, so I'm here to kind of give you guys the update on the newest Mongol build that people have been trying. So this is not, I didn't make this build, uh, I made the, or I didn't invent this style or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I spent like 30 minutes versus AIs trying to figure out the build to get there in a super efficient way. But there's been other people who have been like testing around with this uh, kind of Mongol play style. So I kind of wanted to give you guys insight behind it. And maybe you try Mongol, maybe you like it. And I think that maybe this is the, the future of Mongol. Maybe how this is Mongol is played. And I also will be playing this build quite a few, uh, quite a bit on my live stream on Twitch. And I also have an idea for another Mongol playstyle, which is very, very unique and not done before. More on that another time. So, uh, let's get started. So, first things first, uh, there's two ways to do this build. Okay, so this is going to be Deerstone's landmark into trade. And I'll explain a little bit later why. But there's two ways to get to this point. Either by tower rushing or by playing standard, like without tower rush. Now... I'm not gonna show you the tower rush way because I have a guide on tower rush how to do it. So basically you will do a tower rush into Deerstone and then continue the build as I'm doing it here. Um, once you get to Feudal. So I decided to record a version that has no tower rushing in it. So you guys can play, you know, standard without doing the tower rush. Cause tower rush cannot be done against every Civ. So here we go. Number one thing that has changed uh, since, you know, a while back with Mongols is you always want to put one villager to make Ubu and you want to put five villager villagers on the closest wood. So I spawned here, right? And I put my villagers here. If my TC was going there, for example, I would still put five villagers on the closest wood because you, you got to wait for the TC to unpack. You got to wait for the sheep to arrive there. So you don't want your villagers to be idle. So basically the thought process is you might as well gather 50 wood and drop it off before you start gathering food so your villagers aren't idle. So no matter what kind of spawn you get, you will always be moving your TC. You're never gonna unpack your TC here. Whether you're gonna move it here, there, or here, you always have some time. So just gather 50 wood, because why not? And when workers are you know, going to drop off the wood, then after that, just send them to the sheep. So, we uh, place the TC close to the gold because, you know, it's not perfect. The gold isn't next to the wood line. It is what it is, but uh, good enough. We're going to be instantly sending um, eight villagers on food. I'm not going to cover the con scouting. I have a scouting build or scouting guide, sorry, if that's what you're interested in. But uh, you're going to put eight on food and then three on gold uh, in order to age up with Mongol. Whenever you're not doing a tower rush, this is a pretty standard build. Nothing new, nothing crazy. And obviously you have stone going for double production later on. So, uh, let me speed this part up because there's not much happening. They're just getting resources right now. So why are people doing deer stones? Well, um, I actually had this thought like a week ago and then Literally the next day, people have been like people. I saw someone do this against me, and I was like, "Yeah, this makes sense," because at one point I was like, "Am I missing something?" And what I'm talking about is the landmark. So you have two options: deer stones, which gives you basically like a wheelbarrow without extra capacity, where you move 15% faster for all units, including villagers. Um, and also all the outposts get it. Now, you can upgrade to Yem Network in Castle, but in Feudal you don't have it. Now, Silver Tree has gone through a lot of nerfs and changes. Like the trade has gotten nerfed recently. A lot of things have been changed around Silver Tree. The cost, uh, the production speed, yada yada. So at this thought of week, I was like, why do you even go Silver Tree? What's the point? It's just a market and what? you produce 40% faster, which goes from 25 seconds to 16 seconds production time and reduce 40% reduce gold cost. Now this might seem like really good, but your traders go from like 60 gold to, to like 35 or 36. That's not, that's not good enough. 
you know like yeah your traders produce faster but what you can do is just get deer stones make market or two and then just trade yes your your traders will be a bit more expensive on gold and it's noticeable very early in the game on the first few traders but once you start trading it doesn't really matter you have plenty of gold but you have deer stones which is 15 percent movement speed for your villagers which means that you can move around the map for resources easier your uh gathering in general is going to be better you can defend against raids easier because your villagers are faster not to mention your archers if you're aggressive and you put a tower here will also have movement speed so if you don't go deer stones you need to upgrade your yem uh, network in castle for your infantry or villagers to move faster so it, it's kind of like when you think about it, when you stop and think about it like why would you ever go silver tree it literally makes no sense right like the the reduced cost and and making a bit faster is not really good enough and deer stones just seems like an obvious choice right now so the play style now is basically you open deer stones and then when you age up you just make a market and you start trading and uh it's pretty funny and it's it's kind of funny that no one started doing this earlier even before the latest nerf because latest nerf made it even worse right into a silver tree but even before that i feel like deer stones was probably better so what's next well, we want to have six on food. We're going to keep three on gold. We're going to age up with four. And then we're going to we're going to rally on wood until we have eight. We want eight on wood. No more, no less. We're going to add more on wood later on. So what is the idea behind the build? Well, the idea is for you to actually be very aggressive. Uh, to not really defend at all. I didn't want to kill the scout from AI because I don't want to get free sheep. But the idea is that you know old trade with mongol used to be like you start trading immediately with silver tree you have a lot more traders early on but you're very defensive like you're trying to defend your trade with this build you actually open with units first into trade so you're putting the opponent on the defensive and what's changed from the you know last patch to to this one is you have keshix which um, are not just like two horsemen and opponents like ah oh, whatever it's horsemen you know they're kind of like uh, you know budget knights right so the opponent kind of has to take them seriously now once these guys finish aging up um, I'm gonna keep nine on food that's how many you need uh, nine ten is fine uh, to produce Keshex and produce villagers I took one worker from uh, that was on the food or landmark whatever to build stables on Uvu now, if your Uvu is really far away, like let's say my Uvu is like here, you can build stables here and then kind of wheel it over there. But if opponent has a scout, he might block your stable. So be careful about that. You can do that. It's going to save you a little bit of gathering time. But honestly, with the M network, just send the villager to build in range of Uvu. Don't risk it. And this same villager is going to be building a market as well. So we're gonna build market here because the trade is on the top side we're gonna get wheelbarrow as well with the first 150 extra gold after aging up Ugh. thank you that was a sneeze um and now we're just getting to eight villagers on wood why do we want eight on wood well we want to be, be able to produce traders we want to be able to produce a tower here and there and eventually we want to produce archers blacksmith and so on and so forth so here i just decided to make a market here so i don't run all the way there but again you can just run there it's whatever um and the moment the stable finishes we're gonna produce two, oh it says lancers here still that's funny keshik lancer we're gonna produce four keshiks with the bonus uh whatever it's called with the, the stone production so we just produced two we're gonna produce two more and our stone is completely depleted from now on after these first four the uh stone usage will be strictly on upgrading towers and on producing double archer because now we got that initial you know boost in cash eggs. now we're gonna focus on archers and tower market's gonna go down and i'm instantly gonna start making traders to go for that once i had eight on wood we want to put six on gold 
The reason we want 6 of gold is, well, cash eggs are quite expensive. They're 80 gold each. Trader is 60 gold because we have normal market. And we still want to get double broad axe. We're going to want to get horticulture, forestry, survival techniques, see if I go on deer. So there's a lot of upgrades that I need to get as well. So we put 6 on gold and then we're going to um, rally some more onto the food. So right now the split is 886. If you need the correct split, you can always go back in the video and see how the workers are are sorted out we got archer range coming again i got nine on food i just one guy moved uh, to make the, the archer range and what you want to do with these guys i mean it's it's like imagine you're playing french you know you want to harass you want to harass the gold you want to harass the stone whatever the opponent's playing you want to try maybe pick off a scout uh maybe even if their wood line is a bit exposed maybe charge in and get a villager pick off anything you can do charging to the berries is also good um you just want to do damage if you can't find damage anywhere just start burning some buildings you know just do a, a, anything that you can to put pressure on your opponent and basically not let them attack you because you want to be able to trade uh behind that and we see the first trader is about to pop once the archer range finishes we're gonna start producing uh double archers you already see i have enough stone for double archer production and by the time they finish you can have uh, another double archer production. Why do you make archers? Well, you make Keshiks, they're gonna make um, Spearmen. Now, if you're playing against French, okay, um, or Rus, or, or you know, Malian with Sofas, or uh, Delhi with Gazi Raiders, there's two ways you can play it. Uh, my personal advice is if you play against those civs, because Gazi Raiders, Will probably do really well against Keshix resource per for resource. So my advice would probably be to instead of adding archer range, you know, if they have a knight, they're not gonna make a spearman. They're gonna just beat you with knights. So what I would advise you to do is instead of archer range, throw down uh, a barracks and then go Keshix spearman and put pressure on the opponent the exact same way. Uh, you can also use those spearmen to defend your trade later. So yeah. Um, now, as we're producing, you know, Keshiks, now we're going to produce Keshiks one at a time. As we're producing Traders, every once in a while you'll be able to sneak an upgrade in, like Double Broadaxe. And eventually, once the trade gets going, you'll be able to, um, um, you'll be able to get the rest of the upgrades without, like, needing to cut any units or anything like that. Um, like I said, these guys, just use them for harassment wherever you can. And... The excess wood that you will have, even though you only have 8 on wood, you will have a little bit of excess wood. Because your villagers are fast as fudge boy. 149 movement speed because of wheelbarrow and yam network. So they're moving really, really fast as you can see. Which means your wood income is actually really, really good. So, what, what do you want to do with the extra wood? Well, uh, obviously you produce archers, you get upgrades, um, you produce traders. You can get blacksmith eventually. I don't need to get blacksmith yet because I only got like four or five. I got four archers, I think. Yeah, four archers. So what I'm doing is I'm making a tower here. Now, another thing that um, I see a lot of people uh, or mistake that people make, they start making towers now along the way, right? To, to give the Yem network to traders. But Yem network is not really worth to make across the whole way with only like five traders. It's worth it if you have 10, 20, 30, but it's not really worth to do it now. The reason I'm making a tower here, it kind of serves double purpose. You get double value. I'm going to speed boost all the traders right in this area, but also I'm going to protect deer. If there was no deer here, I wouldn't make this tower at all. Uh, maybe I would make a tower like in this area and then start collecting these deer so I have a tower here. So try to combine your tower with protecting something uh, and then later on kind of fill in the gaps in between to, to get the aura to, uh, to boost your traders. Now another uh, good part about this uh, uh, Mongol trade because of Keshiks and all, because you're putting pressure, you don't need to stay only on sheep or like starting berries or something like that. You should be able to be more open onto the map, getting deer, uh, you know, getting berries, getting deer, maybe even getting a boar. Like another tower that'd be really good if I made a tower here and got the boar. So not only I'm protecting the, the trade post, I'm protecting the boar and I'm also getting the movement speed. So try to place your towers like that, where you get multiple kind of values 
uh, value out of your towers. So, like, you don't want to place a tower here. You know, it, like, what does it do? It just gives them speed. Sure, it protects a little bit, but not really. Like, basically, your defense should be your offense. Now, another thing you can use your wood to... to, to another thing uh, you can spend your wood on is by building a forward tower. And this is something I haven't seen too many people do. But if you're in this kind of aggressive stance, let's say we're playing against Abbasid or French or whatever, and they're on 2TC or 1TC, and they have deer here, and they have deer there. If you put a tower right here, you can basically get full vision from their base, and it's going to be easy for you to rotate up and down because you will get movement speed on all your units moving through. So you can rotate a lot faster than your opponent will, and you can see where their armor is going, and it only costs you 100 wood. They won't really be able to engage into the tower without you know, committing quite a few units, which you can then defend with your units. So um, you can also, like I said, use excess wood on, on tower like this. Um, Potentially, if you're playing against some sieve that needs a lot of food, uh, maybe pay, uh, put tower here, and then the next tower I would put here to kind of block the deer and the berries. So you want to basically cause as many issues for your opponent uh, while you're building up your trade. So your trade does arrive a little bit slower compared to the old, old Mongol trade, but you have a lot more force on the front. Now, let's say the opponent uh, has better army. And you don't want to fight. You want to kind of maybe run back. Maybe you lose this tower. You want to be able to have like a tower here and maybe tower on the top deer or, you know, on, on these barriers, whatever. So that even if you can't defeat their army, they still can't attack the trade. They got to like go around and clear the tower so they can get food. And once they, if they move with their army north to clear a tower here, then you can pounce on the bottom side, try to pick off something. So just kind of be like a, like a little mosquito. Just be annoying, right? And don't stop producing units. So the idea behind this build isn't like the old Mongol where you build some traders and then you're like trying to sneak a fast castle because of Lancers. There's no real point in a way going fast castle because <coughs> you can upgrade your Kashyyyks again and Archer, sure. But it's a lot of resources to spend and you will not get as much value as you were getting with mongols in the previous patch where caches didn't exist because once you got to castle the lancer like kind of like spike would be uh insane and you kind of needed to get to it to defend but now because you have caches and you can make archers and you got yam network so your archers are actually pretty decent with the movement speed as well uh, you can stay in feudal for a lot longer because uh, this is something that's always been a thing with Mongols. You would never, never, never want to stay in feudal. But in this patch, it is not the worst thing to do, surprisingly. And, and it's still getting uh, a little bit to get used to. Like every time I've tried Mongol, even if I'm making units, I'm like, oh, I should age up to castle. And then I age up and I had games where I lost and I was like, why did I, why did I age up? You know, I, I, I don't get anything out of it. Again, your Kashyyyks are a bit stronger, but the amount of resources that you invest that could have been units is too damn high. So the idea behind the whole playstyle is you have the map control, you do the trading, you, you can go on the deer, <coughs> and you basically try to starve out your opponent and quote unquote defend your trade by attacking your opponent. So this kind of Mongol playstyle is, in my opinion, very much how Mongol should be. Like very aggressive, kind of towers everywhere, giving vision. And opponent is stuck in their base trying to break it, break out. I, I feel like it fits how Mongol should be played, right? As this harassment sieve and um, you know mobile and all that. And you can see Yem gives 15% attack speed to archers, so rotating becomes a lot, a lot easier. Now, uh, at this point, I would probably say. You know, I'm getting blacksmith, so you can get your upgrades out uh, as well. But I would probably say at this point, you know, if you have, like I said, excess wood, you can start adding a tower here, tower here, tower here, just so that you have protection and also the yam movement speed for your traders. Because you can see this one is about to leave the the the, the movement speed about. I mean, you see, it's it's noticeable. I mean, it's 15%. You know, 
and it kind of adds up. Um, it's it's something that you might not be able to, you know, conf you know confidently s say visually, oh, this is really good. But if you have it fully connected, it is pretty good and it increases your income. So, yeah. From this point on, I ran out of sheep, so I just go on the deer with my workers. I would build like two towers. Uh, and again, those two towers are kind of protecting over here as well in a way. Um, and I just, you know, don't want to be losing villagers left and right, right? After this, I would probably go on berries, 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 maybe even the boar, and then slowly add pastures. So the reason you don't add pastures immediately because, well, if you're adding pastures, then you'll probably be cutting down on units and you want to make as many units as possible. So you're kind of basically racing in a way your opponent for you to gather all, all the food but block them from getting their own food um so they have to either stop making units thus making you have more units or they have to stop making units and then go farms which again will have more units so uh, both of those are pretty pretty good for you now at this point you can see that my resources because i have 23 on food and they're all on deer, so it's obviously good income. The income is getting quite high, even though I've been producing the whole time. So in a second, I can age up. It's kind of like a natural way of aging up where, I mean, you can see my army. It's, it's a big army, right? And I've been producing the whole time. I've stopped now for like 30-ish seconds because I'm about to age up. And that's how you want to age up with this build. You don't want to age up by, you know, not producing anything for three minutes. You want to count like naturally age up while you're doing everything you want to and slowly because of how much income you have the age up just kind of happens naturally you age up with kurultai if your trade is lost or if you just lost a crap like a crap ton of traders you can go for step readout and go on gold and mine gold if you need it but if your trade is good i would probably say go kurultai because it has healing aura it makes your units do 20 percent more damage which is actually a lot of damage and is really useful in in fights and from this point on uh you can see i'm now rallying onto the wood um after like 20 22 23 workers on food uh also i forgot to mention once i had like six seven eight traders going back and forth i pulled away from the villagers on gold because you know you don't need it your gold comes from trade um so yeah once you have like 22 23 on food uh you can start uh rallying onto the wood and now you're gonna have obviously more and more and more wood because you're gonna have so many villagers there um so you can add more production maybe go three stable three archer ranges or three stable three barracks depending uh what unit comp you're going you can also add monasteries to get relics now you might think well i don't need relics you know i got trade well you're not taking the relics for your income you're taking the relics so the opponent can take relics right that that's kind of the the idea behind it and from here on out you're going to slowly start building pastures uh, like i said your trade should be connected with the towers as well um, you can start placing towers like all over the map so if you look at my vision you can start placing like a tower here you know a tower here tower in the middle just to get full vision of the map so that because you don't have walls you have to protect yourself kind of preemptively like if opponent is coming from the top side you have to see it well in advance in order to defend it one thing that i haven't uh, uh tried enough that i definitely need to try is uh mangudai in castle i am pretty sure they're bad so i would not advise you to go for it because you have so much gold the logical thing is to go for pure gold units like men at arm um Keshix and mangudai or crossbows and if mangudai were just a bit better it would be great because then you could go Keshik mangudai and you could just raid your opponent and defend with this massive horde of cavalry which again i feel like what mongol should be but i think the realistic thing that you want to do is continue making keshiks continue raiding with keshiks and slowly move into crossbow man at arm because eventually the opponent will attack you and you don't want to produce archers forever because if you produce archer or Keshik, you will simply have way too much gold. So um, you want to produce crossbows to make sure you counter their knights, their men at arms, 
and while you want to be raiding with Kashyyyk and being aggressive with them, I would suggest to start making men at arm and uh, crossbows. And if possible, you know, if, if there's a chance you can get into Imperial somewhat quickly without dying, definitely would suggest to do so because then you can make hand cannoneers. Um, I think that Mongol is a lot better in Feudal Age than it was before. The weakness of Mongol is probably now in Castle. Funnily enough, that's where Mongol used to be the strongest in pre kashyyyk era. And now Mongol is the weakest there because, you know, every Civ has Lancers, has Knights, right, that are strong. You have Kashyyyks that are strong, but they're not that... They cannot be used as the main unit in, in uh, you know, huge fights. They don't have a lot of health and they melt. So because of that, you need to transition to Man at Arm. But if you can get to Imperial, you kind of get to skip that part, that, that awkward era where you're kind of like, ah, what do I make? I, my arm is not strong enough. And then you can make Hand Cannoneers and Kashyyyk. So even though then Kashyyyk are not that great in the main fights, you just need them to tank, right? Because then you got Hand Cannoneers that are going to obliterate everything. You also get upgrades for Kashyyyk and Imperial. You know, you get Biology for increased HP. And you get Bombard Towers, which is obviously um, very, very good. And then you can also get Stone from Trade, which is great. And that's kind of it. Uh, I have played some games with Mongol Trade in the new season. Uh, I had pretty bad results, actually. Like, the, I lost, I think, the most games with Mongol this season. Uh, but I was going Silver Tree. And the games that I won, I felt like I should have lost. But I do think that this small addition, of, although it's not really small, I think it's quite a big addition, but it's a small decision to go Deer Stones and play more aggro into trade, I think uh, might be uh, quite a bit better. Now I do have another idea for Mongol that I mentioned earlier. It's gonna give you a little tease. It's 2TC and you don't use stone to produce units. So do, do whatever you want with that information, all right? If you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope you give Mongols a try. Remember, uh, even though Mongol is considered one of the weaker sims at the top level, I honestly don't think they're weak at all. Uh, if you're not playing at the super top level, I think they're more than fine to play. And I think especially at lower levels, people don't really know how to deal with trade too, too well. So I think you can get away with it and uh, just get insane income with it. So try it out. See if you like it. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now, winning with Mongols, of course. And maybe I'm also trying the new build that I mentioned earlier. And for Twitch gamers, well, I have no internet. I'm recording offline, so there's no Twitch gamers. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, great night, great morning. And I will see you in the next one.